The reality is this is, I think, just a blip, a, a false rally before much lower prices for gold, silver, and miners, which you and I... Uh, let's jump right into the charts that you've prepared for the audience. This is uh, We've talked about this issue before, you and me, this theme, uh, but let's mm -hmm. revisit that because right now is a very uh, an opportune time to revisit this topic. It seems to me, or it seems to a lot of investors and traders out there, that we are in a renewed bull rally. And you have a chart that explains why that may not necessarily be the case. Tell us why. Sure. Yeah. So, so my whole idea here is um, it's based around Stan Weinstein's four stage analysis. And the key for investors and traders, because these four stages I'm going to show you here really apply on any time frame. It can be a tick chart, a one tick chart. It could be the monthly or quarterly chart. So understanding what stage an asset is in, whether it's a stock or an index, it doesn't matter. I'm referring to more or less the stock market as a whole right here. Um, but there's four stages. Stage one is a basing stage. And I've got it red on here simply because a stage one is a very difficult time to trade. It's usually choppy markets, not a lot of opportunity. So you're best to steer clear. They're dangerous. Uh, stage two is a bull market phase, and it's green because there's a strong trend. We make money when things are trending and have big moves. Uh, then we've got a stage three topping phase, which is uh, also red because it's a very difficult time. It's a lot like a stage one, except for much more volatile and sectors are all over the place. One week, one sector could be hot. The next week, it's not. And, and this is kind of the stage that I think we're in right now. And then we go into a stage four, which is green as well, because there's lots of opportunity to the downside. Falling prices are in one way better than a bull market because stocks, commodity prices fall about seven times faster than they rise. So I see this all the time. We can see a stock move up for you know five or seven days and one day the gains are wiped out. And that's the same with the stock market. We can see years evaporate in one year to the downside. So as you were saying, people are thinking we're in this stage three, or sorry, they think we're starting a new bull market phase. And if we were to actually look at what the emotions are of the market participants right now, I'm seeing headline after headline of people talking about growth stocks are on fire. The new bull market has started. Last year was the bear market. We're good to go. But the reality is I think we're really in this complacency stage where people are thinking the next rally is about to start. And we're in this kind of topping phase. And this is when precious metals and, and, and miners take off. And we've seen this happen over and over again in past uh, bull bear market cycles. And the bigger the move in precious metals and miners at this stage, the more likely we are to have a stage four decline where we go into a real full-fledged bear market where, where things sell off. So that's where I think we are right now. We're seeing gold and uh, gold miners lead the way this this year. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of where we are. And, and, and to touch on the cycles that you're talking about, you know, the real cycles here in this market are last year we saw the energy sector perform the best. This year, it's precious metals. Well, these are the two type of sectors that do well at the late stages just before the market rolls over and has a huge sell-off. So this is why a lot of people need to be aware. Everyone, I think, is getting very bullish on precious metals and miners. They think it's off into the races. The reality is this is, I think, just a blip, a, a false rally before much lower prices for gold, silver, and miners, which you and I have talked about many times before. I think there's going to be a big reset in 2023, going to create an amazing opportunity in the precious metals space. But based on the super cycle, it's not going to happen till late this year at, at most. And I think there's going to be lower prices, a great opportunity to especially accumulate physical metals because we could go into a five or 10 year rally in precious metals after this uh, final cleanse of a bear market. So that's kind of the high level view of, of those cycles there. Chris, can you scroll up to uh, the stages chart one more time? Sure. I just want to ask you how you know which phase we're in because the complacency phase that you were talking about, this minor uptick, if, mm -hmm. you, if you just look at that particular chart pattern that's Use as an example for that, for that, for that, uh, for those cycles. Uh, that uptick can be applied to, let's say, stage four. It can be applied to stage one, maybe. Um, how do you know it's stage three? So there's a lot that comes in, but the the basic, really high level that Stan Weinstein uses that I've used for years 
is simply this this dotted line. Now, this is this is just a, an infographic, uh, but more or less, it's the 150 day moving average. A lot of people use the 200, which I find is is way too delayed. I mean, you're looking a full year delay. The way he looks at it, and same with me, is if the 150 day moving average is sloping up and price is clearly holding above it, then you're more or less in a stage two. When it's when price is below the 150 day and the, the moving average is still moving up or it's flatlining and price is chopping around it when it's giving mixed signals, you're probably in a consolidation phase or a stage three, which is where we are now. And then when price is defined, like definitively below it and the moving average is sloping down, you're in a stage four. So that's a really high level, just quick observation of where we are in, in those potential cycles. Uh, and then you can look at those other cycles of which sectors are performing very well. And we've seen things rotate through those various sectors and with precious metals and energy leading the way and PE ratios being very high and the growth stocks um, clearly leading the way to the downside, it definitely is showing that there's not a lot of support in this market. And um, it's really, it feels like it's just, I hate to say it, it's like a sucker's rally. Um, it's just this false bounce, this false bottom. And when the bottom falls out, man, it, it could get really, really ugly uh, across the board. So that's why if there's any time that somebody should focus on risk and position management, it's this phase. People right now are going to get hurt the most if they step into the market because literally a month or two from now, we could be breaking down. We could be in free fall mode. And the scenario that's set up, as you and I have talked about this uh, a month or two ago, is is very similar to the 2000-2001 market top. It's a, a major reset, and the stock market might not just correct for a year. It could trade lower or sideways for multiple years, like the 2000 correction. I mean, the right. SP 500 took 12 years to recover after that. Uh, it's not it's not a something that anyone who's you know 45 plus wants to endure lose 12 years potential so uh, i guess if you're in stage three you have to ask yourself uh do i want to let, let's assume that we're certainly in stage three you have to ask yourself do i want to ride out that bull rally that false flag that you were talking about or do i want to just stay on the sidelines and be completely defensive or all cash as one might be and ride mm -hmm. out this giant roller coaster of a dip that's about to hit us yeah and i mean i firmly i don't believe in holding assets that are falling in value i mean it goes against every bone in my body it goes against every every investor's goal is to make money so the buy and hold is out the window i think anybody who's more or less 45 plus to do the buy and hold is extremely dangerous especially with the setup that is unfolding because if you're, you know, three, five, 10 years away from retirement or already in retirement, the last thing you want to do is go through one of these, watch your value decline, have to withdraw money to live off of when it's at a huge uh, drawdown. So this is, this is definitely, you need to decide, do you want to go through this and have a life-changing event? Probably for the worst, it's going to be very stressful. In fact, there was a study done that says uh, there was 6,500 suicides in 2008 to 2009 directly linked to the 2008 financial crisis of falling equity prices. So this is this is this could be another repeat, and it's way better to miss out on some upside gains if the market does start to move up. We can always get back in when we get a new buy signal, but it's not worth going through this. This literally takes people's lives. It is extremely dangerous. People don't realize what they're flirting with. They're, we're on the edge, this market, to some very negative um, relationship breaking, all kinds of things uh, in terms of family relationships. This type of financial stress does damage. So I'm all about how can I help and protect as many people as possible? You need to know. It's not about making money right now in a stage three. It's about preserving capital, protecting it in case the bottom falls out. And we can make a lot of money from falling prices. But the key here is at least for the majority of people to step back and say, you know what? I'm going to reduce my risk. I need to protect it. Um, I think that should be everyone's focus here right now. The S&P 500 lost 18%, nearly 20% over the course of 2022 some would say that's already quite significant. Now, I don't know about families um, you know, being broken apart over a 20% loss in the overall stock market index, but uh, you know, 20% is not a small number for the largest uh, index in American capital markets, Chris. My question is, how much further can we go before this is all over? 
Yeah. I mean, I honestly think this, like the SP 500 from where we are right now could fall another potential 37% roughly. I mean, that, that is from a current big levels. decline from here, from the, from the current levels. So we'd be down like 40 and change. Uh, that is enough that creates a lot of, a lot of damage, a lot of stress, um, lots of bankruptcies, you, you name it. I mean, that, that is going to be another standout event that resets the financial markets like we saw from you know the 2000 uh, market top and uh, the 2008 so there's a lot of potential downside and it, people just need to be aware that this is this is a very delicate situation and people the problem is the most people turn a blind eye to the market when it goes down like this 20% is literally just the topping phase and then when it breaks down is when these these big sell offs go margin calls take place so, yeah, I guess maybe this is human psychology, but typically when you talk about a major market move, either on the downside or the upside, in this case, the downside, uh, people tend to associate that move with some sort of catalyst. Now, in 2008, it was the collapse of Lehman Brothers and the greater financial banking system, uh, mm. which caused a contagion effect all throughout uh, American industry, How, collapse of the housing market, mortgage subprime crisis. These are real catastrophes that we could all observe and feel. Uh, there was a palpable recession, unemployment skyrocketed, people lost their jobs, some people never recovered economically. This is all a very real and understandable catalyst. But now we're talking about another potentially worse decline in the capital markets. And I'm looking around and I don't see such a catalyst. Help me, exp help me understand this. Yeah, I mean, in most cases, we don't know what, it, what really is the big cause until... You know, it's really deep underway. I mean, at this point, stepping back, we could say, well, it 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 has something to do with COVID, the COVID crash, and all the all the funding everyone got. Who they drove the prices overvalued. Uh, as I always tell subscribers, if something goes straight up and it goes too fast, too quickly, it's going to come straight back down and unwind in a really big way. Uh, 